What's up guys? Caleb Johnson here, here to talk to you about Hero's Journey. So without much further ado, let's get this shit started. So the Hero's Journey is made up by this guy Joseph Campbell. It's got 12 steps. Step number one, the ordinary world. Essentially, what the ordinary world is, is the hero's home. I drew like Earth, because that's like all of our homes. The hero will begin the story in a place that's familiar, like uh, Oedipus, for example, starts the story in Thebes, where he's fucking rolling over that place like a motherfucker. Or it could be, a, it doesn't even have to be like a mythical place and shit. It could be like, a, I don't know, Milford, Connecticut, some shit represent. So, um, step two, hero's journey, call to adventure. This is when the hero is called away from his home. This is when the hero, uh, in Oedipus's case, he goes to the fortune teller lady, tells him a bunch of fucking bullshit he's about to do, so he basically jumps town. But another example could be uh, the hero could be working long summer days at fucking Rite Aid, trying to earn enough money to get a car and shit. And then some guy online tells him he's got a sick ass ninja sword worth a couple thou, gives him a great deal on it. Hero's not stupid, he buys it. <clears throat> Later on, takes it to a pawn shop, finds out it's not even worth 50 bucks. Guy ripped him off, disappeared, just like that. No email, no phone number. That's uh, just one example. And now the hero, stuck with a fucking jank ass fucking katana, has to find a way to get rid of it. So essentially what he's gonna do is call up his rich uncle, see if he could get him to spend a couple thou on it. And that brings us to the refusal of the call. The hero calls his uncle, fucker doesn't pick up, calls him again, sends him right to voicemail, fucking his own blood, no respect. And the hero decides to take matter into his own hands at this step and goes to his uncle's house in person with the sword. Which leads us to uh, step four. The ungrateful rat bastard uncle. Let's call him Ryan. So the hero goes to Ryan's place, sword in hand. He says, hey Ryan, you want to buy the sword? Ultra rare, it's worth a couple thou, I'll give you a great deal on it. Of course, Ryan, dumbass, doesn't even buy the sword, doesn't even consider for one second that the hero just mowed his lawn last week, fucking did all of his chores for him, fucking big ass lawn too, it's like fucking 20 acres. Doesn't he, rich guy's rich, he doesn't even have a John Deere riding mower, he's gotta fucking use a push mower. Guy doesn't even consider that, fucking doesn't buy his sword. The hero uh, rightfully gets a little pissed off, punches the guy in the face like, fuck you, like, fuck you uncle. Like so fucking stupid. Then the hero fucking cheeses it, makes it back to his place. The parents have already gotten a call from the uncle, fucker. Fucking tattled, he's a snitch, deserves to die. And uh, the parents are pissed off, don't want anything to do with the hero. Uncle's gonna press fucking charges. So the hero's left with no option but getting the fuck out of Milford. No disrespect to the hero's friends over at Joseph A. Foreign High School, Lion Pride, represent, represent, but the hero's gotta get out of town because he's got the fucking fuzz on him. Of course, the hero doesn't have a car because some fucking ninja sword motherfucker scammed, scammed his ass, so now he has to improvise. Hero goes on Craigslist, looks for vehicles, and the next step of the story, the hero finds this guy Gary, who has a truck, mad chill guy. Hero calls up Gary, they arrange. Essentially, Gary doesn't fucking need his truck for a couple months, he's gonna be out of town. So the hero is like mad grateful, gives him like 200 bucks cash, cold hard cash. Fucking drives out of town in Gary's truck, great guy. And at this point in the story, the hero will typically go west. Hero uh, will have heard that some uh, sick ass people live over in Washington, Seattle. He's never been, so he figures, 
Let's go check it out. He drives fucking I-90, I-90 West, almost all the way. Fucking makes it to Wisconsin. Drew this myself. The hero is uh, then confronted. And that brings us to the fuck this nonsense. Fuck this fucking nonsense. So essentially, hero wasn't even doing 10 miles over the speed limit. And fuckers still got him. Still fucked him up. So the cop checks, checks him out. It looks like he's going to get off with a warning. Hero's kind of stoked about that. But then the cop sees the fucking samurai sword in the bed of the truck. Cop says you can't have a weapon without a good reason. It's like fucking dumbass. I fucking, I'm trying to sell it, you fucking idiot. I'm selling the fucking sword. Like, so that takes us to a, a three-day stint in a Milwaukee jail. This is honestly horseshit, but to be honest, jail's not that bad. It's kind of sick. There's this guy named Fresh there. Uh, guy's mad funny. Should be a comedian in my eyes. Fucking hilarious. Should be fucking Comedy Central and shit, but anyways. The bad part about jail, after three days, go by pretty quick, but the bad part is when you gotta call your parents and say, come pick me up. And they're like, why should we do that for you? And it's like, because you're my fucking parents? It's not fucking brain surgery here, come on. That brings us to the mad awkward car ride. <laughs> if you think my dad is hard to talk to, you, the hero's dad is hard to talk to usually, you should have seen him on this fucking car ride. I couldn't even listen to my songs. There was a new Kendrick album out at the time. Damn, great album. Couldn't even listen to it until I got fucking home. Say la vie, say la vie. Here we go. Looks like it's getting kind of hot. Okay, so speaking of home, welcome back to Milford, Connecticut. Time to apologize to your bitch ass uncle. The guy's a fucking crybaby, crying his eyes out the whole time. Acting like I fucking broke his nose or some shit. Guy doesn't even have a bruise. Uh, the hero didn't break his nose or any shit. The hero thinks he's a wuss, not me. Um, so yeah, I, so at this point in the story, the hero is gonna beg, beg and plea. Oh, please, please don't sue me. Please don't sue me. Fucking uncle pushover that he is, forgives him, life goes on. And finally, that brings us back to Rite Aid. Thankfully, news of the hero decking out his uncle didn't make it through town. Rite Aid hires him back, no problem. Essentially, they'll hire anybody, so that's fucking sick for the hero. He's got a steady job again. And uh, honestly, it's not that bad. The hero is mad chill with his fucking coworkers. On breaks, they'll go out back on night shifts, fucking light up a spliff, fucking take some tokes. Uh, that was the hero's journey. Uh, fucking Joseph Campbell and some shit. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Until next time, Lion Pride. Peace out. Anyways, uh...